Hello, welcome to Trust Your Glitter. This is Christy. And I'm here today. I'm talking about the astrology this week. Um, and I'm not editing, so this is my uh check. If I do anything awkward or weird, I'm leaving it in the podcast. Um and today I'm gonna do a little bit of a different type of astrology podcast. Because I'm a stand-up comedian, and I know that a lot of comedians listen to this podcast, I'm going to kind of approach it like a stand-up comedian. So I'm going to come at this from a little bit more of like a sharp tongue collie perspective where I might ruffle a few feathers with what I'm about to say. I might be a little bit more controversial. If you need a love and light, like hunky-dory like happy-go-lucky astrologer there's thousands of astrologers on this platform go on over there um i'm gonna approach this from how i've been kind of channeling throughout the week and getting my messages through written journals in the morning so i want to talk about today the 13th of august and i'm on the east coast in the united states so this conjunction happened today at 7 15 in the morning between venus and the sun in leo at 20 degrees and this is a very important kazemi so a kazemi is when the sun and a planet are conjunct so mercury conjunct the sun would be a mercury kazemi and so today is a a venus kazemi in the sign of leo in the sign of the sacred lion, in the sign of the sacred heart, the sacred courage, the sacred strength. And I'm not going to do this as sort of how I normally do a traditional podcast where it's like, these are the transits. These are the aspects of the week. Because I think the way I look at it today with the chart of this sacred conjunction between the fiery soul of the lion, the heart And Venus, the planet of love, abundance, the sacred feminine, you know, this is a sacred alignment of the twin flame today. And if I look at the chart throughout the day, we have something in the sky called an envelope. And this is with the moon. The moon is in cancer today. And as I look at this and these aspects, the energy folds and unfolds between reality of this is the tangible world that we see and also this is the sacred times that we are going into the underworld in many ways so a lot of astrologers are probably talking about how this is one of the most abundant days of of brightness and manifestation And this is a week of manifestation, absolutely. And I'll get into that as we talk about, get into the new moon in Leo. But I'm also looking at this from a couple of different angles. And one of the angles is a, yes, is a Kazemi with Venus. Venus is retrograde. Venus is also in a dark night of the soul. And I, I want to call a shout out to Heather Ainsworth and my friend Nikki Fuchs for cluing me into her. She's a whole special on Venus in the underworld. And I would, uh, I'll link her video in the show notes today. But I'm looking at this from a broadened perspective of feminism. So if feminism, femin- being a feminist is a trigger word for you, if it's something that makes you angry, if it's something where you're like, oh gosh, here's a girl on a tangent, here's a woman on a tangent about feminism. Again, there's a thousand podcasts, videos on the astrology of the week that'll take you point by point, day by day. But I'm going to look at this as a phase of growth and by spiritual growth with venus out of sight we cannot see her she was in the night sky she's rising up into be a morning star so in this particular case we have 
a lot of lessons about love. And trust me, this is why this comes into play where I'm talking about being a comedian, a stand-up comedian, because my journey is not a journey of, oh my gosh, love and light, kumbaya. My journey is a journey of deep spiritual work. And I think a lot of astrologers that are out here understand that work, but spiritual work also means you have to go into the shadows. It also means that you have to go through hell in order to understand what the other side is like. Um, I've had a lot of people say to me over the years, well, you're an, a tarot reader, you're an astrologer, like, why don't you like know, like, why are bad things happening to you? And it's like, bad things happen to everybody. And that's the purpose of this. And Venus is not just about good things. And that gets me into feminism here because Lilith and Venus connected last week. It's almost like they had a before conversation for this solar alignment. And I would say that the sacred alignment is historic in the case that look at the timing of everything. Um, look at ancient religions. You know, these are our generational wounds that are being worked through through the divine feminine the divine feminine is going through this and going at this from like there is a cosmic fuck up here there is a cosmic lesson of recalibration and if we're looking at this from whether you believe we're in the age of Aquarius or not, I look at the entrance, that doorway was December 21st, 20th, 21st, 2021. And the great conjunctions were kind of our like shakeups and wakeups throughout that year, heading us into that age of Aquarius. I think it was opening that energetic portal for us. If we're looking at it from that, this is a societal generational we're going to look we're never going to be the same humanity is never going to be the same and what venus is doing right now for us is she's highlighting a lot of issues on a social scale and what i need to talk about and this gets into like look i'm a comedian and where i gravitate is towards listening to other storytellers so i listen to mainly comedy podcasts astrology or astrologers that story tell or tarot readers like chloe ann taylor um who is a storyteller but she also does she does tarot and she's a storyteller she tells you her about her personal life so i'm gonna also do a little bit of personal stuff because i think it also reflects what's going on right now but i'm also looking at this from also intuitive levels so I'm an intuit I look at astrology from a deep intuition a deep because there are so many camps of astrology and Venus sun alignment is across the board so I'm looking at this from a perspective of like where my Venus is and I want to say like if you know astrology take a peek where's your Venus in your chart your Venus story is also part of this whole perspective. And I'm talking about this Venus retrograde story. Venus does not go direct until September 3rd. So we still have this long story of going through the dark night of the soul through our Venus sign. Venus being self-worth, our values, uh, love, romantic love, also money. Um, which, you know, that's what's translated abundance in this realm. So, you know, I'm deeply going through a money story right now and money and housing. So like that is my dark night of the soul. And I have a, a vlog that I document my comedy journey on. And if you go to that vlog, it's called Camel Toe Strong. You see the ups and downs of my living situations over the years as a stand-up comedian. And the way I've told people like, I went through the long journey of stand-up comedy. Um, I I know there's a lot of people who are TikTokers who have just blown up. They're working clubs, you know. But my my journey as a comedian is my Venus journey. I have my Venus in Aries, 
but my Venus in Aries is on directly at the exact same degree, my Nadir, my IC. So for me, my Venus journey comes from the soul up because our IC or Nadir is our soul. And for years and years, um, since I became a comic and entered my 30s, I just kept writing myself off as like, because Venus is beauty. And so like throughout my comedy journey, I'm like, oh, well, I'm just not a beautiful comic. So like, I just kept saying this to myself and why I'm sharing this part of it is because Venus is this stuff. And for feminists out there, for those who are waking up to what the patriarchy has put women through, this is what Venus retrograde and Lilith and the sun are shaking up towards is saying, what were you told about your value your whole life? What is your Venusian value? I mean, Venus is the carnal body of a woman, the curves of a woman. So we see like Lizzo in the news. I'm not going to make comments on that because I have my own sort of conspiracy opinions. And it's that's not that's a whole other podcast. But we see like women in the news and we see what women's bodies and what women or what those who identify as women, we see these arguments out in society. And I just want to say lots of love to everybody out there, everybody going through their own story of personal value. Um, and I'm specifically saying this for those who did not identify with the patriarchy. And by patriarchy, what I mean is anybody who has been exploited by a system that exploits souls. And I think that that's how it's on a grander scale. So what is above is also so below. And by that, I mean, look at what's happening on Mother Earth herself. We've got fires in Hawaii, which are sacred lands. And we've got fires in our hearts, which are sacred bodies. You know, because Venus is in this retrograde of Leo in a fire sign. And the Western world is the patriarchy. It is a contracted patriarchy that just went through a Pluto return. We are seeing a lot of shifts on Mother Earth, whether they are A, natural, B, manufactured, or C, all of the above. We are seeing within ourselves also reflected in the planet herself because the planet herself is a sacred mother, a sacred body. I'm not a fucking saint. I have a, I use plastic bottles. I try my best. You know, I've driven around the country, used a lot of fuel and gas. Um, but I have a deep feeling to share what I am saying today. And it kind of steps back from the transit. So the way I'm going to reflect the transits is just looking at the new moon chart for the week. Because ultimately, the lesson is about connection and love. And we're on this planet with a mission. We were all given an assignment. This is all a Earth assignment, whether you want to look at it a specific way or not. And on this Earth assignment, we're being told, you know, we're being thrown different things. And who got hit the most is the mother, is the sacred energy of the feminine. Um, this is why, like, the podcasting community was so, is so brotastic, where it's just, like, bros basically taking the, the sound and triangulating that shit. Agree or not, agree or disagree. But the male podcasting platforms are just basically men dick daisy chaining each other, jacking each other off verbally, and giving each other um, attaboys and paying their mortgages. And women were disconnected from each other historically, you know, and we're just finding each other now. We're just trying to. I think a lot of the sacred feminine Lilith and Venus meeting in the sky last week with Venus in retrograde is like Lilith and Venus were almost giving each other permission to respect one another because I think, you know, there's a Beyonce song um, about how like 
you know, women are t- basically taught to be jealous of one another and to be disconnected communally from one another when ultimately the divine feminine is meant to be the communal energy. And, you know, I'm saying this from somebody who's deeply, deeply been on a spiritual hermit's journey. You know, we all have to go on these spiritual quests. And, you know, the last decade in my life, yeah, I've had angels in my life. I've had community in my life, but a deeply sacred feminine connection community? No. And I think a lot of us are reparenting that because we were taught, you know, the woman's role is this one thing. And whether it's to be an object, whether it's to be a mother, even like a hustling woman in, in, in like business culture, you know, there's this shift of like, yeah, this woman is a CEO, but there's often like the lonely CEO. And I'm not saying this is for, this is not either or, you know, there's strong feminine communities within the business world. But if you're in the business world, you have to adopt a lot of masculine traits in order to survive that shit. And with Venus in the sign of Leo, this is the lioness. But if we look at the lioness role in the pride, the lioness is the huntress. She's the hunter. She hunts for the masculine. So even in that, like, it's like, here's this king sitting in here in this pride and and allowing his lionesses to take care of shit. And with Lilith and Venus meeting in the sky, It's basically like saying, actually, we're taking care of each other. And this is a new moon on the way in Leo. Because Leo, I think, is one of those signs that is intensely masculine and intensely feminine. So when Venus is in Leo, she is a lioness. When the sun is in Leo, he is that big lion's mane king. And if you look at this from a perspective of relationships, there's a lot of having to let go of pride and the ego to make things work. And Mars did go through retrograde earlier this year. Venus is on a long journey. And I would say that this is one of the most difficult transits of the year because it is not for just it is not just like oh fashion like don't get your hair cut things like that it is for some deep revisiting of what this work actually means what is the feminine in your life what have these structures meant in society what is mother earth to us how does our courage and strength how does our heart chakra align with that what does our deepest soul heart wants and these are those questions that we're getting asked through these transits so i'm gonna pull up and i'm like not tech savvy in any way uh so let me just pull up the um new moon chart so today the 13th we have the Okay, there we go. I hope that this records. If it doesn't, like, you can make fun of me all y'all want. Um, so the alignment, Kazemi's today, the 13th. I waited to talk about the Kazemi because I think with the envelopes in the sky um, today, that the energy is like a folding and unfolding, almost like because we had Lionsgate, then we have this Kazemi. It's like, oh, it's like this. It's almost like we're in an episode of Futurama. So on the 15th, we have Juno enter Leo, which is of partnerships, the asteroid of partnerships. And then this is our new moon chart, 5.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I set the chart for Washington, D.C. There's a reason I do that. It's because I deeply view Western astrology locates in Washington, D.C. And so here's our chart. And let me see if I can do this. Boom. Let me see. Okay. So here. Uh, 
Oh man, I wish I was like better at this. If somebody has suggestions on what I can do, but here's our new moon in Leo on the 16th. And excuse my drawing abilities, but it's at 23 degrees of Leo. And at, in this particular case, Venus is super close by, but she just passed over. How do I like get rid of it? Okay. So in this particular case, Venus is at 18 degrees of Leo. And she has just gone through that. Kazemi, can I move this shit over? Lord have mercy on me. All right. How do I make it smaller? Oh, Lord. Select. Okay. There we go. So with this, our ascendant is at 13 degrees of Leo with this particular chart time which puts all this energy in the first house, which means a lot of this energy is about being seen kind of out in the world. So this is a very um, in-your-face kind of new moon. It's very much meant to be seen. You're very much meant to be seen. Um, and you're meant to kind of express your fire in a very unique way. So let's see if I can put, it says draw, Highlighter. There we go. So the thing that here, so we have this here. I don't want this to be gray. How do I change the color? Again, I'm not editing any of this shit out because I'm so awkward at everything I do, but let's do pink. There we go. We also have, nope, it's not pink. Anyway, these are highlighters. I don't want them to be gray. I would rather them be pink, but whatever. You can see that there is a square. So this red line is a square between, now it just looks like a dick and balls. It looks like an odd dick and balls, but it's like somebody has like awkward balls, but then they have like, like really big spaced out balls. Okay. So anyway, so we go here and we have a square with Uranus and the squares with Uranus are kind of that, I mean, we're seeing UFOs in the media we're seeing all this stuff and it's very much related to ufos and everything related to outer space so it's interesting because i do think there's a lot of time portals going on at once i think that there's a lot of this otherworldly out of this realm that we quite understand with the squares from this new moon to uranus so there's probably going to be a lot of of UFO developments in the media or Project Blue Beam or however you want to view it or however your brain can really handle it this time because our brains are being expanded. Our brains are kind of showing us like maybe this world that we were set up, this, this patriarchal system that we were told was running everything and was keeping everything in alignment is really not what it actually is. And maybe we're being shown a different way. Now, how do I change the color of this? Like, let's see. Okay, cool. So here's our new moon. Also, um, it's not a direct trine, but it's a trine. We're doing dick and balls the whole way. So it's a trine to the north node at 26 degrees Aries, which um, is very helpful, even though we're getting like this otherworldly, like, what in the fuck is going on? I'm just having fun with squares. We also have like, but this is the way we're supposed to be going. And we're supposed to be taking charge here as well. Do I have to do an eraser for all this shit? I guess I do. This is called team meetings with Christy. So the thing about this North Node, and we also have a trine to Chiron with Venus with the new moon. So I like that as well. Um, Chiron being retrograde, Venus here being retrograde. Um, but the other thing is because this, this uh, Aries North Node and Chiron in Aries are, so this is Aries, I'm just having too much fun. If you if you enjoy weird, awkward shit, um, here's Virgo. This is called a quincunx. So with a new moon, the other thing that's going on is Mercury and Mars 
our quincunx to Chiron in retrograde in Aries. So why this is so important with this dick and balls here is that Chiron is kind of our, it's our wounded healer aspect. With Mars here, this is taking that healing, that wounded healing, and Pallas Athena is there as well. Hold on. And Pallas Athena is there as well. So we have Mercury at 19 degrees, Mars at 22 degrees, and Pallas Athena at 17 degrees of Virgo. Quincunx to Chiron retrograde in Aries. They talk to each other and say, take control of this. It, it It's going to be awkward. It's going to be weird. You might have to get a lot of therapy on it. You might have to do a lot of journaling on this. But take control of this aspect in your life. This is part of your heart's healing. This is part of your heart path. This is part of that growth and that lesson where maybe, yes, you were, say you're somebody who's gone through some very deep abuse. Maybe you're somebody who's gone through some things that that are unspeakable. This is also saying, speak that truth out here. Gosh darn it, why did it move from purple? I have to be on it or else it's just gonna, it's not gonna stay purple. All right, here. So speak your truth. And also Pallas Athena is, this is a wise truth. This is something that you've needed to say. So this is this connection here. And it's being supported by this new moon. This new moon is supporting it with a trine. This is the new moon with a trine to the north node. Um, so I think this is a very deeply spiritual chart. Even with the squares to Uranus and Jupiter, I mean by sign, but really with Venus, we're going to get some squares with Venus as well. And the thing about that is, again, expect some weird news coming out. Um, expect some very unusual events that are unexplainable. There's just going to be a lot of things that we don't understand. Um, and it's okay that we don't understand it right now. Time and space are really kind of folding into one another. The other thing that somebody actually asked me about last week, let's make sure it's in purple, is what is a kite? Here is an actual kite in the sky. So I'm going to follow the lines. This is a grand trine. It's not a perfect grand trine, but for purposes of what a kite is, the grand trine here with, we'll say Mars, we'll kind of say Mercury, the, why, the reason why it's kind of, this is 28 degrees, Pluto retrograde in the sign of Capricorn with Uranus. It gives us the grand Earth trine because these are all Earth signs. And then we have sextiles here, making this a kite with Neptune at 27, Neptune retrograde at 27 degrees, Pisces, the sextile. This is an outer planet sextile between Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto gives us that sextile with the kite in the grand trine. So you see it looks literally like a kite. It's all in purple right now in the sky. Now this is pointing us to Neptune. Woo! Um, and Neptune is asking us to go towards our dreams, to go towards the impossible maybe it's what people call delusional to go towards those goals because we are in a realm of abundance we are in a realm of deep understanding of what our hearts are asking us to do but our heart sometimes is not in alignment with our brain and the thing that i really like here is who's representing the brain here is this aries north node also with chiron so these two are actually bringing us these energies of like, okay, our head is saying this, but at the same time, our heart is saying this. So mind and heart are actually in a deep, deep reckoning right now. And the, the planet of the mind, Mercury in shadow 
is going to bring us these lessons as well. And Mercury in shadow is asking us, okay, our mind and hearts are aligning, but ultimately, what are the details of the situation? Because Mercury and Mars are in the sign of the divine accountant being Virgo. So look, was that Uranian as fuck? Yeah. Are we in a time of Aquarius? Absolutely. Was that the most Uranian reading you've ever had? I don't know. It's for you to judge and for me to just figure out as I'm going. But that's really what this new moon is. And I want to say that this new moon kind of all encompasses the week with these alignments. And I want to say that it is about just our heart's journey, our divine feminine healing. We all have divine feminine, divine masculine within us all. And this is asking us to allow her to lead the way or to review what the divine feminine means in your life, what the divine feminine represents to you. So I am also doing a ongoing exercise. And this week is, I don't think it's going to be the final week of writing with the moon, but this is from new moon in Cancer to new moon in Leo. And so this is the final sort of pocket of that writing exercise. So I want to talk about that and then I'll pull a Kali card at the end. So for those who were writing with the new moon in Cancer and then followed out with writing with the moon phases, this is kind of reflecting back. So if you did the writing exercise with the Cancer new moon, which was the five W's and H of writing for a new vision for yourself, this is also going back and going through those notes and seeing your who, what, when, why, and how, and seeing how that evolved from the Cancer New Moon on July 17th till now. If your who, what, when, where, why writing has changed, what needs to be edited, what you've accomplished since then, or what you've learned about yourself since then. And so that's part one to this whole thing. The other thing is for this particular new moon in the sign of Leo, this is also taking the who, what, when, where, and how and doing a shorter version of it. So I'm going to do a 5W and H for this new moon in Leo. So the questions are um, for the new moon in Leo. One, um, who represents love to you? That's number one. Number two, um, what happened with that love, AKA like what was the love story behind the who? So that is what happened in that story. It can just be short um, as well. Um, number three, when, when were the time frames of this love story? Number four, where were you in life? Um, this could be like physically, where were you located on this planet? Or like, where were you? Like, uh, were you starting your first job? Were you in school? Like all these different things. Um, and then number five, why? So the why is, why was this love to you? Why was this love to you? Number six is how. How did you feel? How did it make you feel? So that's the five W's and H of the new moon in Leo. And then also um, the other thing is, with this new moon, she is in the first house. She is in Leo. She is with Venus. You know, she just had a conjunction today with Venus as I record this. So part of Leo is expression. Express this. How do you physically express this? So, you know, I know I have comedians and writers and creatives that listen to this. And it for this particular new moon exercise, I strongly urge you to post something or do something where like, say you're a comedian, go perform, take a picture, um, put your work out there in the world if you can with this new moon, because this is a beautiful time to upload the thing you're afraid to put out there. Put your comedy out there, put your podcast out there. This is a really good time to put that manifestation out into the world. Um, the new moon specifically being on the 16th, but you have a whole week to kind of work with this. So even if you just want to like, Post a cute selfie of yourself, do whatever, but this is about expressing yourself and showing your heart to the world and not being afraid. 
um, because Leo is about divine courage, divine strength. And I got to take these glasses off. <laughs> divine courage and divine strength to really put yourself out there. And even if like, like I, I, I keep reflecting that quote, say it even though your voice shakes. And in this particular case, express it, even though right now it might not look like you know, thousands of people are seeing it. Maybe you don't want thousands of people to see it, but really it's about the energy of Leo, which really is saying it might not happen right now, but you're putting that energy of the new moon cycle. And that is the manifestation right there. The manifestation is saying you did all this work in the background, put it out now, put it out. Don't worry about being judged. Uranus is square. Uranus is like, I love the unusual. I love the weird. Leo was like, but I, I want to look perfect. Uranus is square. Like you don't got to look perfect. I'm Uranus. And it's all about uniqueness. Look, there is a wonderful video of Lady Gaga in an egg on the red carpet. And Joan Rivers calls that shit out. All of that is Uranus right there. It's hilarious. Look it up. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's, it's I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but I want to do one Kali card because I think the sacred fire energy, the sacred feminine fire energy is so strong right now. So I'm just going to work with one Kali oracle card for the week. Um, and this is just a universal message for everybody. This one looks kind of scary. Let's see. Kalika Tantrika. Kali overcomes karma, realigns us with our path when we have veered off course, reverses the momentum of negativity, and detaches draining energy cords, restoring us to full vitality. It may seem like your will is being thwarted or you are not getting what you want, but goddess knows what she's doing. Her actions will benefit you. Trust. Trust your glitter. That's what this podcast is about. Trust your damn. Trust your motherfucking glitter. Trust your motherfucking glitter. That's what Kali says. Who fucking cares if your hair looks perfect? Look. Who fucking cares? Like today I was like, I'm not going to wear this shirt. Because, you know, ladies, you're out there and you got the boobs. I got these boobs. I don't got like. I don't got the kind of boobs that want to stay in one place, okay? So I put the shirt on today because it says, do what you love, right? And I was like, oh, that's perfect for the energy. But when you sit down and you got the boobs, right? Then the shirt goes like that because they don't make shirts for boobs. I wish they made t-shirts for people with boobs. Because if you get the big t-shirt, then you look like you're hiding, like, like you look like you're hiding a baby bump, Right. And at the same time, if you get the shirt that really fits you, when you stand up, when you sit down, your boobs like become this little plaque. Like, they become like a, like a bookshelf when you sit down. So like right now, as I sit here, it's like I got a little under bookshelf for my boobs and the shirt. So I wish they had like shirts that had like cut. I'm sure they do. I'm sure somebody's like, you know what? Athletica has it, bitch. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't know Athletica had it, but you know what I'm saying is I got this shirt from like the Walmart or Marshalls or wherever the fuck I got it from, and it doesn't have a little platform area for your tits. So <sighs> being a woman is like, oh, I have to have the right tampon. I have to have the right fucking pads. I have to have the, the right fucking eyebrow gel because the 90s are over and fucking now... Now I have to have big bush. I now, my eyebrows now need to look like some sort of rodent on my face, you know? Trust your glitter, all right? Is that, that's the point of what I'm trying to say. All right, and with that, this has been Trust Your Glitter with Christy Bellich. This has been the astrology for the week of the 13th through the 20th of August in 2023 in the year of the chariot, but also the year of the extraterrestrial. Although we've know, we've been knowing they've been here. You know what I mean? We've been knowing they've been here most of us are probably genetically related to them and then you know some of us chose to come on this planet the other, other us are like god damn it we have to go back to that that assignment again we have to go back to that homework assignment again okay all right all right okay so thank you for watching
Support your local comedy scene. That's all I have to say. And take care. Bye.